Hello and welcome back to another episode of Solar Professor. I am your Solar Professor Steve Geiger. Once again we're going to continue our NABCEP series and today we are going to discuss um, what you need to know for the NABCEP exam. I'm continuing that and today in particular we're going to talk about series versus parallel. Um, very important to understand these concepts for the NABCEP exam. So, um, <clears throat> basically in a series connection, we're going to understand how that is put together, and then a parallel uh, connection, we're going to understand how that is put together. Um, how to use with uh, sample NABCEP problems. And so there are various NABCEP uh, problems and uh, equations that may be used with series and parallel. So having a basic understanding of it is uh, very important for the exam. So let's get started here. All right, this is paramount. I can't stress that enough for the NABCEP exam. Right here, what I have in red on the board for series and what I have in blue on the board here for series is absolutely critical for you to understand and with this particular knowledge you are able to go ahead and solve most series in, par in fact all series in parallel problems um, so this is what it boils down to what I recommend uh, folks to do for the NABCEP exam is actually on your scratch paper before you start the exam write down each of these four concepts that I've been going over in these videos and is in particular this one as well you're going to write down series in series what happens voltage increases okay amperage stays the same super important we'll show you why in just a minute in parallel write it on your paper parallel volts stays the same I got a little equal sign there um, amps they increase Okay, so that's, that's paramount right there. Let's take a look at some samples and such. <clears throat> All right, so series in action right here. Um, the way that we've got this set up here is a couple of batteries that I have on the uh, presentation and uh, just simply a load. Okay, in this case, it's a light bulb. These could be solar cells. These could be solar panels for that matter. Um, and then of course the voltage would change accordingly but however we're using just the standard let's say they're double A type batteries um, 1.5 volts here and 500 milliamps and that is what double um, A batteries basically are um, let's see what happens here so if we set up a series connection what are we actually doing we are connecting right here negative to positive so the negative of this battery is connected to the positive of this one if it was a solar cell, same thing, negative to positive connect, uh, connection there. You can see each battery is the same size here, right, in volts and amps. And what that's going to do is, according to our rule that we just looked at, let me back up here, in series, what happens to volts? That increases, okay? In parallel, um, amps increase. Remember those two things, you're going to be in good shape. So. Um, what's happening in this circuit, the voltage is going to be increased. It's going to be multiplied by 2 because there's two batteries at 1.5 volts. The milliamps, they stay the same. It does not change. That's super critical, and we see that right here. So there are, there's our complete circuit. Also, AC and uh, DC considerations with series connections. Um, you don't set up AC circuits in series. It's typically not something that I see done really ever. Um, I, I, would, I would imagine maybe there are a few um, examples of it, but in alternating current, in alternating current um, devices in your home, you have 120 volts um, coming out of the receptacles, running your lights and such, or you have uh, 240 volts, and that doesn't change. They remain constant. So um, you have to set up your devices um, in the house and your, your not just your devices your wiring in the house in uh, parallel it's always done in parallel all right so with that let's look at the parallel circuit here so we can see what's happening in this particular situation um, we are connecting all the positives together okay 
and then we are connecting all the negatives together. They come down to the load. So that's the positive connection to the load, that's the negative connect connection to the load. What happens in parallel? Well, the amperage increases. Voltage remains the same. So we can see that with our complete circuit here. The voltage has not changed um, and our uh, amperage has increased. It's a thousand milliamps, which is the same thing as one amp right there. Um, interesting how that works. The nice thing about using series and parallel in photovoltaic systems is we can play with those numbers in regards to uh, system sizing and designing our system uh, with different uh, modules and then working with the specific inverter. <clears throat> Over here, so we can see what I said. All positives um, and then all negatives are connected together to the load just like the diagram here. AC versus DC considerations, I mentioned really the same thing. AC circuits are run in parallel um, so that the voltage remains the same throughout the house or business or whatever it is. doesn't matter if it's commercial either. Um, and then it is called a branch circuit. AC connections, um, AC wiring in the house is called a branch circuit. It is not a series circuit. Um, it's in parallel and it's branch. All right. Continue on. So, I have a couple of exercises here that I want to do with you, okay? This is pretty small to see on the um, video here. However, um, if you've been watching some of the other videos that I've been doing, you'll realize that these are um, on my website, uh, solarprofessor.info, and you can actually go to the actual uh, presentations, and you can see this, you know, bigger for, for yourself. The PDF files there. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead, you know what, should we use, uh, let's use blue here today. Um, this says here, design a 24 volt system uh, with four 12 volt modules. So these modules are 12 volts and 3.5 amps. And so we know that the total voltage of our system is going to be 24 volts, that's fine. Always remember to label your, your uh, stuff too. Don't forget to put your units there. Down here, this is also going to be 24 volts. The question is, <coughs> excuse me, how do we connect these together in series and or parallel um, to go ahead and complete this system and keep it 24 volts? Well, the answer is we know um, connecting things in series increases the voltage. These are 12 volts, and since you can't see it, let me make it bigger. 12 volts and 3.5 amps. Maybe my writing's not helping much uh, either. I don't know. Anyways. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to connect uh, negative to positive on one set. And what's that going to do for us? That is going to increase this set to 24 volts right there. We're done with that set. We're, we're there already. we got another set right here. We can go ahead, because we've got four modules, we can uh, create another set right here. And then that set is now 24 volts. Make sense? Good. Now, here's the deal. We have two sets of them, so what's going to end up happening here? Now the amperage, which normally would stay the same in series, and it does here, so this ends up being this set right here, just by itself, okay, ends up being 24 volts, all right, and 3.5 amps. However, because we have two sets here now, you know what's going to happen. The amperage is also going to increase, so we're going to end up with 7 amps right there. Okay, so that's how that's going to work. And of course, the way that we need to connect this is grab the positives. Okay, so we're going to come up here and grab all the positives. We're going to bring them down to that positive right there. Then over here, we're also going to grab in our wiring all the negatives and bring those down over there. So we've got the solar uh, modules up here. Down here, we've got the batteries. Okay, um, let's do it with the batteries. These are six, whoops, six volt batteries. And they are 350 um, amp hours. That's a nice amount of amp hours there, actually. Um, okay, that's a six. Now, they're all six volts. Four of them, you can do the math really quickly. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we set those all up in parallel. The entire um, string um, of batteries is going to be in parallel. Okay? And we can simply take the uh, positive come over there and then take the negative and connect it there and we are done. What's going to happen with the amp hours? The whole thing is in series. It is not in parallel. It will stay 
350 amp hours. Okay, good, excellent. Let's move on. We'll take a look at one more. Uh, and I, actually, before I do that, I got to erase this. All right. Now, uh, because I drew this on the uh, actual whiteboard here, the next page of the presentation has it actually solved for you. Okay. So same uh, results right there. The next, let's take a look at the next one. Next one, it says design a 48 volt system. So now we're getting even uh, uh, larger in the voltage, um, which is good. And so we're going to figure out how to do that. 48 volts right here. Okay. Um, down here, we're also going to end up with a result of 48 volts because that's what it's asking for up here. And we're using eight solar panels now. So these are 24 volt solar panels, which is very interesting. So 24 volts, and then it says 10 amps. Okay. Let's look at the batteries here. The batteries are, well, I can barely read that. Um, 12 volts and 160 amp hours, it looks like. Okay. All right. Um, so, think in your mind how we how we want to go ahead and set this up, okay? And what we need to do is we need to say, all right, we've got eight of them there. Um, let's go ahead and chunk it down into pieces. And because these are both 24, we're trying to hit a 48 volt system. That comes to mind really quick. I'm going to put two of them together, and guess what? Let's do it this way. Negatives right there, positives below, boom. We'll just connect them all like that. Done, right? Makes it super simple. Then I'm going to connect, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, take what I've done here in series now, and then I need to uh, do the, the other combo and put it in parallel. So I'm going to come over here, bring it on down, and I'm going to connect the positives together. Same thing here, I'm going to connect all the negatives together. Let's do that. Bring it on down, boom, done. Okay, and how many batteries do we have? We have, um, looks like eight batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they're all 12 volts. So, in this particular case, um, what we're going to need to do is connect four of them together so we get a 48 volt system. We're connecting them together in series. Same thing here. Go ahead and connect them together in series. There we go. Done. Now, Combinations of series and parallel here are working for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop out these sets of four in parallel right here. Okay, bring it on over and then we're done. Let's finish the math here. So I've got 10 here uh, amps, all right, and there's four sets. You know what that's going to do? We're going to end up with 40 amps total on that thing. This guy here, we have. Uh, let's see, two strings and then of, of, of four batteries and then we've paralleled them together. Again, each string um, voltage stay, uh, uh, stays the same, or excuse me, voltage increases in parallel, in, uh, in series, that's what we've done here to, to get the 48 volts, voltage increases in series, okay, um, and then in parallel, we've got two sets of parallel, so we're just going to simply multiply that by two. Ends up being 320 amp hours. Okay? So, let's go ahead and uh, continue on. I've got one more thing to show you, and then we can wrap up for today. You've got to think about these in your mind. Basically, just get it clear in your mind. If you're taking the NAPSEP exam and you get some sort of problem like this, Go ahead and write it out. Draw it out just the same way these are. Here's the answer for this one. This is a little clearer here. And you can see, same thing that they've done here. Uh, ends up being uh, 40 amps, 48 volts, uh, 48 volts here, and then 320 uh, amp hours, and it's connected in the same way. And then you've got this on your um, presentation that you can download. Okay. All right. Last thing we'll do, <coughs> excuse me, is take a look at a sample NABCEP type question. So let's see what it says here. There are 24 300 watt modules in a system. We cannot exceed the 600 volt residential maximum for this string system, right? So residential, that's our limitation. That's important uh, to realize. 
uh, that, and, and when, when things are important, you remember I recommend going ahead, going ahead and underlining it, right? Uh, the specs of the modules are 40 volts VOC, so open circuit voltage, and 7 amps um, short circuit current, okay? How should we design the system? So that's the, that's the question right there. We're given these particular parameters. Um, this is an easy one to figure out in um, taking a look at the voltage of each module and the maximum voltage allowed, which is 600 on a residential system. If it was a commercial system, commercial systems can go up to 1,000 volts. But residential, we're limited to 600 volts. So um, the amount of uh, modules that we're using in total is important as well. So doing this really quickly, you can kind of figure it out. You know, if you've got 24 modules at 40 volts, uh, multiply that together, 24 by 40, you're going to uh, definitely, most definitely exceed 600 volts. So best way to do this is to keep things even. In solar systems, we like to do that. We like to keep things even. So to the answer here is to set up